Well, we had another number come up and slip by us without too many people noticing. With this latest quarterly coal report finalizing all the data covering 2018, the totals came in and the U.S. in 2018 consumed just over 687 million tons of coal. Dropping below 700 million as I expected it would for the first time in almost 40 years. Different people and different groups were expecting different numbers, anything between 675 and 700 exactly. Normally, in the past, up until about 10 to 12 years ago, we were consuming a little over a billion tons of coal a year, almost all of which obviously for power generation. Now, where's that consumption gone? It has been displaced by renewables, no, natural gas. States and power companies across the country have been gradually shutting down coal-fired power plants and building new natural gas-fired power plants. This coming about, obviously, as the massive drop in natural gas prices compared to what they were back in the mid and early 2000s and before, brought on as a result of the U.S.'s second resurgence in natural gas production coming out of, obviously, all the different shale fields. Getting rid of this much coal-fired power capacity and all the almost rest of it that we're probably going to shut down is going to end up harshly backfiring on us a ways down the road, but we'll get to that when it comes. So welcome everybody to this week's energy and resource update video, weekly video where like always, we cover everything from news and data releases surrounding energy, oil, natural gas, coal, and resources, mining, precious metals, rare earths, minerals, Everything that, whether people care about it or not, has quite the utmost significance to civilization. So if you're even remotely interested in this kind of stuff, then by all means subscribe and stick around, because that is our main focus here on the channel. And now to get into it with our regular weekly data updates. U.S. oil production has bumped up a little bit again, up to 12.2 million barrels per day. Again, I expect it to get up to at least 12.8 before the end of this year. And again, I expect the U.S.'s second oil production peak to come between 13.4 and 13.7, potentially 13.8, and that likely being in the early 2020s. U.S. oil consumption for this past week came in just under 20 million barrels per day, fueled by individual consumption numbers of gasoline consumption, 9.13 million barrels per day, diesel fuel consumption, 4.16 million barrels per day, jet fuel consumption, jumping up to 1.89 million barrels per day, and propane consumption continuing to fall with the end of winter down to 848,000 barrels a day. U.S. crude oil inventories increased this week by 7.2 million barrels, bringing the total in storage up to 449.5. Diesel fuel inventories decreased by about 2 million barrels, and gasoline inventories decreased by 1.8 million barrels. Oil prices were between $60 and $64 over the course of the week, increasing as the week went on and ending the week right over $63 per barrel. U.S. natural gas production bumped up a little bit again, now up to 100.4 billion cubic feet per day. Again, I definitely expect it to get up to at least 103 or 104 before the end of the year. U.S. natural gas consumption continues dropping as the winter's ending, a trend that will then reverse itself as the heat of summer sets in, U.S. natural gas consumption for the past week averaged 84.4 billion cubic feet per day. Individual numbers within that being heating demand dropping down to 26.2. Consumption by natural gas fire power plants bumping up a tiny bit to 21.9. Consumption by the natural gas pipeline's pumping system for fuel coming in at 6.3. And 4 billion cubic feet per day exported from LNG terminals out to customers around the world. That being another reason why total demand is probably going to be a little bit higher over the course of this summer, as around this time last year, we were exporting via LNG terminals about 3 to 5 billion cubic feet per day. However, now with constantly added additional capacity at numerous terminals, we're now up to averaging between 4 and 6, and that's apparently going to be increasing because several additional terminal capacity additions uh, down in Texas are expected to be coming online in the coming months. U.S. natural gas storage inventories didn't quite go down to just below 1 trillion as I had expected. 
They've now begun their refill season, bumping up from 1.1 up to 1.3 trillion cubic feet in storage. And this is, of course, compared to on average. At this time of year, we would be at about 1.63 trillion cubic feet in storage. And compared to last year, which was a high demand winter as well, we were still up at 1.36 trillion. Now, how high back up the U.S. inventories will get to go over the course of the refill season, we will have to see. I don't have any call-outs for that yet. Uh, we'll have to see how the summer goes, how, how intense the heat's going to be. Price-wise, natural gas prices remained, again, between $2.60 and $2.75 per thousand cubic feet. Some other prices and their correlations. We have rhodium, which was the platinum group metal with the most lag. After all those price spikes on the expectation of the AMCU strike in South Africa, which again ended up fizzling out and not living up to the hype, palladium and platinum collapsed afterwards immediately. Now after some lag, rhodium's begun to follow them. Iron took a surprising jump up, as cheap as it is when you still really think about it since it's priced per ton, but this week iron lunged up to $93.50 per ton. And zinc this week, most of the time, remained above $2,900 per ton. As, of course, supplies have started thinning alongside relatively stagnated production, which you can hopefully see here. This is a graph I made in Excel off of about 20 or 21 years of USGS data releases on global mining outputs. I'm still making that video specifically about all those. I promise. It's, it's still coming. Uh, some random oil and gas news. There were, again, no real significant discoveries this week. And... We had some hashtag exposed this week. As it was revealed, not that anyone actually really believed Saudi Arabia that uh, their precious Gahwar field was still pumping, as it always has been, quote-unquote, at exactly 5 million barrels per day. Just like we all believe that they still have exactly 266 billion barrels of reserves, just like they suddenly had overnight back in the 80s, and, you know, have... Never had any more or less, because exactly however much they pump each year, they exactly just so happen to supposedly discover exactly that amount each year. You know, because you can trust OPEC. Hashtag OPEC always lies, I want to see it. So Gahwar is, in fact, no longer pumping at 5 million barrels a day, as they still claimed it was. It is, in fact, pumping only about 3.8 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia, as I've said several times one of which was in my OPEC-specific video, or about the Gulf Nations, a link to that should appear in the corner. The end of Saudi Arabia's ability to hold their production plateau will likely be between 2027 and 2029. Now, some other things we have, uh, some electric vehicle sales numbers, and the realities of those numbers, rather. As I did release a video uh, a few months back, about how inside EVs inflates electric vehicle sales numbers by including hybrids. So I made my own dumb little Excel sheet and added up all the numbers from the purely battery electric vehicles. And so basically in the US so far this year, up until the end of March, there have been a total of 39,897 electric vehicle sales, 61,907 in total on inside EVs list, but about 21,000 of those are hybrids. And this pattern has remained consistent. It comes off that usually whatever their actual total is, even if you don't add up the individual numbers yourself, you can usually just gauge whatever their given total is, take roughly 60 to 65% of that number, and that'll give you the rough estimate of the actual full EV sales numbers. So the total for 2018 in the US was listed as 361,000. But based on the average, the number of fully battery electric vehicle sales would be around 216,000 in 2018. So about 0.1% of the U.S. vehicle fleet. And for our final note, Lake Mead, it has begun its drop for the year. Lake Mead has a clearly visible yearly pattern that it follows, although each individual year over time it has been dropping lower and lower in total. And the end of this year's peak has come, and it's begun dropping. And so far since it began dropping over the last two days or so, it has lost about half a foot of water level. And Lake Powell, over on the Arizona-Utah border, has 
kept on dropping. Since the last time I reported on it several weeks back, it has lost another three feet of water level and is still going. And that's about it for this week. So thank you everyone for sticking around and listening. If you enjoyed, please leave a like on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to financially support my continued attempts to exist, links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Redbubble shop are all in the description down below. But that's it, and I will see everybody around next time.